1996, a brand new video game came out for the PlayStation. It changed the face of the video game industry. It took the world by storm and took a lot of high school, senior schools uh, by storm as well. That game was Resident Evil. Now, years later, it's still been going, it's still going strong. We've got a remake of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on its way. So what I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to rank every single console version of Resident Evil from worst to best. Right, before we get started, the usual spiel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also share with your friends as well. Uh, rules of the list, like normal, it's my own personal list. There's lots of different factors to take into account when ranking these. One, graphic, story, whether it keeps the premise of the original Resident Evil. And the most important thing to take in consideration when I'm doing this list, whether I enjoyed it. That's the main factor here, whether I enjoyed it. Also, before we get started, just to let you know, this is the first in a four-part series that we're doing on Resident Evil. I'm doing parts one and three. If you want to know where parts two and four will be, they'll be on a different channel done by John Joe's Fast Facts. And what I'll do, up here, there should be some cards saying, giving links to those videos. So go and check them out. But enough of the self-promotion for myself and John Joe's. Let's get on with the list. Number 23, Resident Evil 2. Right, wait, before you shoot me, I'm not actually on about the main Resident Evil 2. There was actually two different other versions of Resident Evil that came out in 1998 as well. One was for Game.com and the other was for the Tiger 99X. These were more 2.5 uh, versions of the game. Other than that, I can't find any information about them, which is why it's at the bottom. They're so hard to find, I've got nothing behind me. No graphics, because there isn't any. So please don't shoot me, it's at the bottom because there's nothing to it. I can't actually rank it compared to everything else. So this is, I had to put it in because it is actually a version of Resident Evil. But yeah, sorry, nothing there, it's at the bottom. Number 22, Resident Evil 6. Okay, this one I am meant to put at this very bottom of the list, Resident Evil 6. Quite simply, I hate this game. It's awful. Resident, the Resident Evil games, at heart, are supposed to be a survival horror game. That's what they're supposed to be, with a little bit of action, puzzle, but ultimately, a survival horror game. This was a full-on, action-packed game from start to finish. There was no survival horror. The story was just so far removed from the Resident Evil games, it was unbelievable. Granted, it was okay for graphically wise, but no, oh, I, no, there's probably got to be people out there that like this game. I was not one of them. I hated this game. I hated, I hated, I hated, I hated. Moving on. Number 21, Resident Evil Umbrella Corp. Okay, so this game has the Resident Evil title on there, but other than that, it's not really a Resident Evil game. I get the feeling the map was actually designed for a different game, it didn't make the final cut so they just stuck zombie, zombies in it and said it's a Resident Evil game. Yeah, sorry, I, it, I can't really put it up there, it's boring, the single story player mode is just boring, no there was nothing to it, it was more pretty much just a cash grab. But there you go, I didn't hate it as much as Resident Evil 6, I'll stop mentioning that's number 6 now. Next, number 20, Resident Evil Gaiden. Resident Evil Gaiden, have you ever heard of this game? Because I'll tell you something, until I actually did research for this list, I never heard of this one. I never knew that there was a Resident Evil game that came out for the Game Boy Color. I knew there was plans and I, an attempt at the first game, but it was too much. So I did a bit more research. This was because they couldn't do the original Resident Evil game on the Game Boy. So they did a different version. I don't know why they keep liking sticking Gaidens, because they did that with the Metal Gear Solid games. But other than that, because of the because it was a Game Boy Color, the graphics on this are appalling. That being said, it was more of a top-down uh, type of game rather than the uh, third-person shooter that we were used to. Actually, saying that the fighting scenes were quite unique and specific to this, so it was very different. But it had an interesting story, kept you going a little bit, but I think because 
nobody ever heard of it. I never heard of this until this week. Researching this video for this week, first I heard about it. Uh, had you heard about this one? Number 19, Resident Evil Survivor 1 and 2. Right, I put these two together because there wasn't really that much difference between Survivor 1 and Survivor 2. But this was Capcom's first attempt to basically make a light shooter version of the Resident Evil games and it was an on rail uh, shooter game. On paper it should have been okay but I think they fell very far from the target on this game. Bit clunky, bit yeah, that's all I can really say it was yeah. It was an okay attempt but they did actually learn from this and make better uh, but like shooting games, light shooting games later on, but this is the first attempt, two attempts, best forgotten. Next! Number 18, Resident Evil Dead Aim. So like I just said, later on they did sort of get better at the shooting games. This is a ma massive improvement over the survival ones, but the problem with Dead Aim is just sloppy. That being said, one advantage this had over the other one, it was a little bit more slower, so they brought the survival horror system back. Just a little bit sloppy. At least they were moving in the right direction though. Like we are with this list. Number 17, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Now, I've already sort of promised that I wasn't gonna mention Resident Evil 6 again on this list, but I've got to. One of the problems that this game had was it followed Resident Evil 6, so that hurt it. It also did hurt the fact that there was no scares, there was no thrills or anything like that. Same again, the story mode was naff. That being said, it did have a cool thing. I mean, the primary focus of this game was a multiplayer. And rather than they just did a group of people against zombies, it was a group of people versus a group of people with AI zombies attacking both teams. That part was cool. The rest of it wasn't. But, as I said, Resident Evil 6 really hurt this game. Maybe if that game was a bit better, this could have had a bit more hype about it. But still, this couldn't save the Resident Evil franchise and it did go on hi hiatus after this. Number 16, Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 5 carried on the main story or the main series from the impressive, popular, awesome Resident Evil 4. The problem is this game start, is where it started going wrong. Now it wasn't as bad as Resident Evil 6. Oh, I wasn't meant to say that, whoops. But it, this is where it started going wrong. They upped the action and lowered the uh, survival horror element. It wasn't okay, it was a fun game, but there was one thing, and I'm, a lot of people are going to disagree with me because I know a lot of people actually like this feature. I hated it, which was the co-op. You had to have two people. You either had a friend with you, someone playing online with you, a complete stranger playing with you, or you had that idiotic AI system which was no help whatsoever. Now I will confess I'm not a huge fan of multiplayer, I'm more than happy to sit and play a single player mode on my own, that's what I get enjoyment from, that's what we're supposed to be. You didn't really get that from this game, and for that one reason I didn't like this game so it's way down. Other than that it did have a few things, graphics were brilliant, it was still moving away more from the zombie to virus territory, but I hated the co-op thing, I'm sorry. Slag me off in the comments. I don't care. Number 15. Resident Evil Outbreak 1 and 2. So, this is their first attempt to do a Resident Evil multiplayer online platform. It was okay. At least it was designed to be that way. The single story uh, things, just forget about that, it was nothing. But the multiplayer was okay. It's just the problem with this game, it came very repetitive, very, very quickly. But, as I said, I'm putting it at bump number five because it was at least designed to be multiplayer. Number 14, Resident Evil The Mercenaries. On paper, this should have been a really good game. It was designed for the 3DS. It was a lot better than the attempt they did on the Game Boy Color. 
They, this is, has Nintendo fingerprints all over it. Nintendo, the whole Nintendo system is just about fun. That's what this game actually was at its core. It was, if anyone had to take a guess, I would say this was Nintendo trying to make a Resident Evil game rather than Capcom. It was okay. The problem was, and what let this game down, was the lack of content. It ended very quickly and there was no replay value. But it was the first time through, great job. Number 13, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. Hmm, another one that was designed for the Nintendo, Nintendo Wii to, to top it off. And this brought out the fun, and that's what this was. Yes, we're going back to the whole light shooter type style games, but this one was a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. Same problems though, wasn't much replayability on it, but it was brilliant and it took full advantage of the Wii's motion controls. It was so much fun to play. The only other thing is it could be a little bit jerky at some times, but other than that, yes, it was brilliant. I actually really enjoyed this uh, game for the Wii. If you, a Wii is still a very good console to have. Number 12, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. Take everything I've just said in the last entry and throw it away because they knocked this one out of the park. This is what they were trying to do with a light gun type game and they got it right and also what made this game even better was the fact that they were actually adapting stories from like the original Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2 so you can go back and replay them but this time as a light shooter. It was brilliant. The problem, the only issue this game had was it was rehashing but told in a better way. I loved it. It was brilliant. Go and get a Wii, get the, actually get both of these two games. But it's definitely well worth a play. Number 11, Resident Evil Zero. Resident Evil Zero uh, was pretty much the last fixed camera Resident Evil game we got. And that was probably a good thing because we were starting to get a bit tired and bored of the fixed camera angles at this point. The main issue with this game is it wasn't really moving anything. It was pretty much just the different level designs and different puzzles to the last few games. We were getting bored of that, we wanted to move on. So yeah, it was a good game. It's still a Resident Evil game. It did explore the backstory quite a lot, which is why it's not so far down this list. But at this moment in time, we, this is where it should have changed. They did it one game too late, but this is where it should have actually all changed. Number 10, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Resident Evil Code Veronica. This is where Albert Wesker came back from the dead and became Resident Evil's ultimate bad guy. And that's what the series needed at this moment in time. Not only that, we finally got Chris Redfield and Claire Redfield together. We've been crying out for that since Resident Evil 2. That's what we wanted in Resident Evil 3. This game on paper should have been Resident Evil 3. I know they went with Nemesis, but this is this is what people wanted in Resident Evil 3. That being said, it was yeah, it was still pretty much the same though. They weren't really adjusting that much different, but at least they expanded on the storyline a lot more and it was more of a fan service game. This is what we wanted. It was a good game. I know when they did the X version a bit later on, it sort of improved graphically. But yeah, it was still a good game though. Number nine, Resident Evil. Here we are, the game that started it all. Now, I have said on previous worst to best list, the first never gets top. I mean, it was a good game. It was a good action game. It was a good survival horror game. It was a good puzzle game. It merged all of that. It changed what we could do in video games. That being said, it's not aged very well. In fact, I don't think it, I think it aged about a day after it came out. The acting, the acting was appalling. Hell, I could have done a better job than that. And who can remember the infamous, I could have been a Jill sandwich. <laughs> Taking out all the dialogue and the acting, take all that away, you have got a really good game though. Um, yeah, just shame. <laughs> or the 
this with Adderbox, but it was new at that time, people were trying, um, but yeah. Number eight, Resident Evil Revelations 2. So the Revelation series was trying to bring back the darkness in the Resident Evil games that Resident Evil 6, oh, I've said it again, that Resident Evil 6 ruined. And to be fair, they succeeded. These were very good dark atmospheric games. Now, Revelation Story is not as good as Revelations, but other than that, it was still a good game. It, as I said, it started bringing the interest back to the original Resident Evil games, which is what we wanted. Number 7, Resident Evil Revelations. Like I just said, Resident Evil Revelations. It was better than number 2, but it wasn't perfect, it was brilliant. It brought interest back to the Resident Evil franchise, had a better story. Granted, I could probably put these two entries in together, but as I said, the story on this one's a little bit better. NAF side missions though, but still a good game, still enjoyable. Especially as it was on the 3DS. Some moral going on here. Nintendo made good Resident Evil games here. Number six, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. I friggin' love this game. Really love this game. I, I think this is one of the few times I've bought a game on day of release. It was that good. I loved where they took it in. They did change a lot by having a singular bad guy following you the whole way around, shouting, STORY! That was absolutely brilliant. It was a good game. It also brought back a character from the first game, Jill Valentine. I'm really excited for the remake version of this, especially where technology has improved to make it a lot more random. That was one of the downsides. It wasn't as random as people make out it was. It was pretty much predetermined when Nemesis was going to appear. But other than that, it was brilliant. I loved it. Um, but looking back at it as an adult, there's one glaring flaw that this game has, which is why I haven't put it as high as... It's a part of me that really wants to put this near the top. But there is a glaring flaw, and that's the whole story. The thing about Resident Evil games is a very rich, in-depth backstory on every single game except this one. There wasn't that much backstory. It didn't really expand on the mythology, whatever, I've just said that word wrong, but I'm not editing that out. But yeah, it didn't expand on it. It could have done, it could have put that much more. But other than that, it was still a brilliant game. I want to go and play that game right now. Number five, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Resident Evil 7, hmm, how the hell do you save a franchise like Resident Evil after Resident Evil 6? Yeah, but they did. They took the whole thing back to storyboard and it was brilliant. I don't know how the hell they did it. I don't think nobody ever expected a decent Resident Evil game ever again, but they did it and they brought back the survival horror to a whole new level on this game. It was absolutely brilliant. Now, the ending of the game, spoiler, the ending of the game does actually bring the whole Resident Evil franchise into it, but for the first two thirds of this game, it could be completely and utterly unrelated to the Resident Evil games. Also, the other thing that I did like about this game was the fact that in Japan, Resident Evil isn't called Resident Evil, it's called Biohazard. So it's Biohazard, Biohazard 2, Biohazard 3, Nemesis. That's how they went. This game sort of flipped the whole type of naming on its head. Because in Japan, this was actually called Biohazard 7, Resident Evil. Genius, absolutely genius. It was brilliant. It was very dark, very atmospheric. Oh, it was just gorgeous. I might need to see a psychiatrist. But still, they pulled Resident Evil from the dead with this game. Number four, Resident Evil 2. See, I told you when I started this list that Resident Evil 2 wasn't at the bottom of the list. This is where it belongs at number four in this list. But it's quite simply, Resident Evil 1 was a great game. Very hard to top it, and oh my god did this game knock that out of the park. It took everything that was good about the first game, bang, 
improvement. They took everything that was bad, <coughs> acting, out, out and improved that as well. They also did do the testing with Mr. X with this Resident Evil game as well, which they expanded on with Nemesis. But yeah, it was fantastic. Also, the hell the hell. It's not one game, it's not two games, it was four games. Yes, it was. You had two different versions of Leon, two different versions of Claire. I have only done Claire. No, I did Leon, then Claire. That's how I completed the game originally. And oh my god, it was just brilliant. This game had so much repaid value, it was unbelievable, it was gorgeous, it still kept the survival horror in just one building, e.g. the police station, and then went on from there. But oh my god, it was just awesome, I loved this game. I must admit, I did prefer playing Resident Evil 3 better, but this actually really brought in the backstory, the whole lot about uh, the Umbrella Corporation, introduced the G-Virus, not the T-Virus, there was just so much content to this game, it was just unbelievable. If you had to read a book about this, and there are books out there about this game, but there is just so much stuff, it would take you a lifetime to understand absolutely everything. Number three, Resident Evil. Now this game, it came out in 2002. It showed how a remake should be done. They kept the core game exactly how it should be, exactly how it was. They didn't change the core game, that was the thing about the remake. Now, they did take the things that were bad, <coughs> acting, out of that game and improved that. They improved the graphics. This one has aged well. It's, you can still play the remake version today and still enjoy it. It took everything from the first game, that was good and left it there. They took everything from the bad first game and improved on it. This was amazing. This is how Resident Evil games were supposed to be made in the early 2000s. Brilliant. But they, and, and, they kept it up. Number two, Resident Evil 2. So this game is basically what would happen if Resident Evil 2 had a baby with Resident Evil 7. That's it. I mean, Resident Evil 2 was an awesome game. It's really hard to improve on that. But they did. They used the engine from Resident Evil 7, brought the graphics from Resident Evil 7, and merged it with Resident Evil 2. And oh my god, how beautiful this game. I can't believe I'm saying horror games are beautiful. Really need to, really need to contact a psychiatrist. But yeah, this game was fantastic. It took everything from Resident Evil 2 and knocked it up a notch. It was brilliant. It was so dark, atmospheric, moody, and the whole Mr. X thing was such an improvement on the original Resident Evil 2, which would have been quite hard to do, but they did it. The thing that this game, for me, does more than anything else, makes me really want Resident Evil 3 to be awesome. I really can't wait for this game, and it's all thanks to Resident Evil 2 Remake. So, we've gone through the remakes, we've gone through everything else. What's at number one? Well, of course, it was only going to be one game at number one, and that is number one, Resident Evil 4. Well, if you've been watching this video, you knew it was going to be number one, because I pretty much said it really early on in this video. I love this game. Now, there's three main versions of this game. There's the GameCube, there's the PS2 version. Now, they're both good. Now, graphically, uh, the GameCube version is a little bit better than the PS2, but they were still good games, and I've played both of them. But for me, the one that knocked it out of the park, and I can't believe I'm saying this because they're a friendly, family-friendly version, is the Wii version. The whole motion control just made to me, I literally walked through every graphic on that game because I enjoyed playing it so much. The only downside of the whole game was the President's Daughter with her ballistics. Other than that, this game is near enough perfect. I loved it. Now, I know they're doing the remakes. There's a part of me that's looking forward to it if they do a Resident Evil 4 remake, but there's also a part of me that's very scared because this game was just literally so perfect all the way through. I loved it. I loved the fact it moved away from the zombie but still had undead creatures. And yeah, it was just brilliant. I loved this game. Yes, this is my favorite Resident Evil game. So there we have it. That's my list of all the Resident Evil games from worst to best. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I must admit, I'm being very biased on putting my personal, but it's my list, so I'm allowed to do that. That being said, it was a long list, so if you're here, please just share it with your friends. Please hit the like button, because you've got to write it if you're still here. That being said, have you ever heard of the Game Boy Color version? Because up until doing research for this video, I'd never heard of that one. It's quite interesting to uh, actually watch that gameplay, because it was just so weird. That being said, as I said at the start of the video, this is the first part of a four part series that I'm doing with John Jones. He basically does facts, and he's doing two videos on facts of the games, uh, I think he's doing one of the films as well. My next video, which will be in a week's time, is 10 things that could have made the Resident Evil film franchise better. That's going to be quite interesting actually. Yeah. Uh, but, now if you are watching this at a later date, at the end of this video, which should be about now, You'll have parts two, three, and four on the screen, as well as the button to subscribe to my channel. Hint, hint. But other than that, I look forward to seeing you next Sunday at 6 p.m. UK time. But other than that, thank you very much for your time, and bye-bye.